Season 3 of Solo Leveling ended with the whole world realizing just how overpowered Sung Jin Woo is after he saved all the S rank hunters on Jeju Island. Shall, courtesy of Bacon Man and that loud scent, here is a full explanation of Season 4 in 10 minutes. Well, no time to waste, let's get started. Now that Sung Jin Woo has officially created a guild with Jin Hu, they need a lot of money to run it. So, Sung Jin Woo heads into a dungeon and solos it. Once he's done, he returns to the office, bringing back all the mana crystals from the raid. Jin Hu then reminds him that they still need one more member before their guild can become fully functional. Just then, someone knocks at their door. And lo and behold, it's S rank hunter Cha Hei Yen. And more shockingly, she is here to join in Jin Woo's guild, even though she's already in one. Since Jin Woo is not a simp, he's a little suspicious and asks her why she wants to join his guild, because joining his guild would mean she has to pay a lot of money to break the contract with her current one. But Cha Hei Yen is too shy to tell him that it's because he rizzed her up without even knowing it. So she lies and says, just because. Not satisfied with her answer, Jin Woo decides to give her an impromptu entrance test and tells her that if she can beat his strongest shadow monster, she is allowed to join the guild. They teleport to the Hunters Association Gymnasium, where the test will be held, and Hunter Cha Hien quickly grabs a weapon. Seeing how determined she looks, Jin Wu then hands over the Demon King's sword from Season 2 to Egress. Egress does his best without actually trying to kill or hurt her, but he is no match for South Korea's only female S rank hunter, and is soon defeated. Seeing how easy it was to win, Cha Hien asks if Egress was truly Jin Wu's strongest shadow monster and tells him that she wants to fight Baru, the very same monster that nearly killed her exactly 13 chapters ago. Being a firm believer in equal ranks, Jin Wu respects her wishes and summons Baru, but warns him not to hurt her. Eager to carry out his master's orders, Baru lets out a battle cry, and round two begins. Cha Hien tries to keep up with Baru's speed, but he is leagues ahead of Egress in terms of strength, and since he already has a track record of defeating her, all she can do is struggle. Jin Wu then tries to end the match, but she is not willing to let her one shot at getting close to him go, so she pushes on with the fight. Using some truly impressive skills, Cha Hien is finally able to land a hit, but this only ends up triggering a very unstable Baru, who then tries to kill her. Jin Wu then quickly has to step in to stop the situation from worsening. Seeing that she is desperate to become a member of his guild, Jin Wu flat out asks her if she is interested in him, to which she replies, Yes. The next day at the guild, Jin Hu and Jin Wu are once again greeted by unexpected guests. This time, it's the guild members of the Knights Guild. The Knights Guild is the only guild in South Korea that consists of only A rank hunters and below. And because they don't have an S rank hunter, they are here to ask Jin Wu to accompany them so that they can raid an A rank dungeon together. Sung Jin Wu agrees, but only if they split the profits 50 50 instead of 20 90. The day of the raid arrives, but once Jin Wu steps into the portal, a hidden one breaks open at his sister's high school, and the orc monsters begin slaughtering the school kids like pigs. A few students are able to quickly escape the school grounds, but most of them are still trapped inside with the orcs, including Jin Wu's sister Jin Ah and E rank hunter Hong Song Yi. Sensing a strong magical energy coming from somewhere, the orc monsters break into Jin Ah's classroom, where she and the others have barricaded themselves in. Looking around, they notice that there are two magical energies in the room but the stronger one is coming from Jin Ah. So the orc monsters immediately rush to kill her, but their attack is blocked by the shadow monster Jin Wu has assigned to protect his sister. Back in a rank dungeon, Jin Wu suddenly senses his sister is in danger, so he rushes to the school, leaving Baru and a few ant soldiers to help clear the dungeon. Hopping on Kaisel's back, Sung Jin Wu reaches Jin Ah's school in record time and stops the boss monster Gorok Taro just as he grabs Jin Ah by the face and is about to kill her. A very angry Jin Wu then shuts him up while he confronts his little sister. He then assigns Egress and a few other shadow monsters to safely escort the remaining students out of the school. Scared out of their minds by Jin Wu's laid back attitude, the orc monsters charge at him, but Jin Wu very easily and quickly breaks their fingers and uses his feet to smash their heads and squeezes them to death like he's making fresh orange juice. But instead of being scared after seeing this, the other orc monsters charge at him, so Jin Wu continues making more juice. The boss monster, Guruk Taro, however, is smarter than his men and immediately begs Jin Wu to spare his life. But because Guruk Taro and his men have already killed so many students, Jin Wu doesn't listen to his begging and kills him. 
After the incident, Chairman Gogun He pays a visit to Jin Wu and informs him that the number of dungeons has been increasing lately. He then begs Jin Wu to stay in their country because after the Jeju Island raid, other countries have been trying to reach out to poach him. He then offers to give Jin Wu anything to make him stay. So Sun Jin Wu asks for the rights to raid high level dungeons by himself. Seeing as they have no choice, Chairman Go agrees. Now that Sung Jin Wu has recruited a third member, much to Cha Hyun's dismay, and has met the minimum requirements to raid a dungeon as a guild, he heads to clear a dungeon with Jin Hu and Hunter Association Wu Jin Shong, who is there to make sure their two man raids are safe. But once they step inside the portal, Wu Jin Shong realizes just how foolish his decision to join them is, as Jin Wu and his shadow monsters effortlessly solos the dungeon. Once it's over, Sung Jin Wu then adds the dungeon boss as his next major shadow monster, named Jima. At the same time, a massive S rank portal has opened up in Shinjuku, Japan, and if they don't clear it in the next three days, it will break open and the monsters inside will spill out. But because Japan lost most of its S rank hunters on the Jeju Island raid, they don't have hunters who can take on the dungeon. So they have no choice but to hire Russian S rank hunter Yuri Orlov to hold back the portal from breaking. Yuri agrees to help them, but for the very steep price of $10 million for each day he holds it back. While all of this is happening in Japan, back in South Korea, the key Sung Jin Woo got from defeating the Demon King has finally revealed its location. So Jin Woo quickly heads over. But when he gets to the location, a few hunters have already entered inside. Jin Wu then heads in to stop them from opening the door that started it all. After stopping them, he enters inside, and the moment he fully steps in, the door shuts. In there, he is greeted by the same statues for episode 1. Because Jin Wu is now overpowered, he doesn't bother with the statues, including the Mega One, but heads straight for the one holding the rune instructions. Happy to see him, the statue gives Jin Wu his last test. Ready, Jin Wu tries to summon his soldiers for the fight. But the statue cancels it, because he is the reason Sung Jin Woo can use the system. Since he can no longer access anything from the system, Jin Woo has to rely on brute strength. And that proves to be enough, as he easily solos all the other statues and even defeats the mega statue he couldn't hold a candle to in episode 3, leaving only the statue that created everything. But this one proves to be a more difficult opponent and manages to seriously beat him up. But because Sung Jin Woo is now the main character, he slowly gains the upper hand. And once he defeats it, the statue finally answers his questions about the origin of his powers. For the sake of keeping this video within the 10 minute range, I won't be getting into that. So make sure you check out this video where his power's origins are explained. While Jin Wu's memory is being restored by the system, Wu Jin Shol and Cha Hi Yin, Choi Jong In, and a few other hunters arrive at the scene where they see Jin Wu standing motionless. Confused, they try to wake him up, but the statue stops them and orders the remaining statues to get rid of them. Unfortunately, most of them are no match for the S rank statues, and they begin dying one by one. Just as the main statue is about to kill the rest, Jin Wu finally wakes up from his sleep and punches it, destroying it in the process and putting an end to the double dungeon. Back in Shinjuku, Japan, Yuri Orloff is unable to hold off the portal, so the S rank monsters come pouring out causing nationwide panic as all of Japan scrambles unsuccessfully to stop them. Seeing this, Jin Wu decides to head over to lend a helping hand. Once there, Jin Wu saves thousands of Japanese people by defeating all the giant monsters in the surrounding areas, and then adding them to his shadow army, thereby increasing his strength. Once he is done defeating all the giants, he notices that the dungeon is not closing, so he heads inside the portal to find the boss. There, he meets a chained up Legia, the monarch of beginnings. Legia tries to trick Jin Wu into releasing him, promising in exchange to help him fight off the other monarchs that are coming, but Jin Wu doesn't fall for it and instead kills him. After the Japanese crisis, Sun Jin Wu is invited to attend the International Guild Conference in America, which he attends with Jin Hu. Excited that he will finally get his hands on him, S rank hunter Huang Dong Su kidnaps Jin Hu to lure Jin Wu so that he can kill both of them, just because they were the only survivors from the dungeon raid in episode 7. Seven. Jin Wu, however, doesn't discover that Jin Hu is missing until much later, because he was busy trying to resurrect and add the S rank dungeon monster to his army, but is unsuccessful because the dragon has been dead for too long. 
When he finally discovers that Jin-Hoo is missing, a very angry Sung Jin-Woo rushes over to save his friend. America's national-level hunter, Thomas Andre, tries to stop him from killing his guild member, Huang dong Su, but Jin-Woo beats him up and then still beats Huang dong Su to death, then adds Huang dong Su as his shadow monster, named Greed, as a punishment. The season then comes to an end with Chairman Go gun hee being paid an unwanted visit by the Monarch of Frost. If you want to know why the Monarch of Frost is there or what the monarchs are doing on Earth, watch this video.